As you can see, I just baked a whole bunch of these. I did these in my new Simply Bread oven and I mixed them in the spiral mixer here. But in this video, I'm actually gonna do another batch in here to show you how easy this is for you to make it at home. The bread's absolutely stunning. The color is beautiful. The taste is amazing. Everyone loves it. We're gonna start by mixing the dough. I've already got a video on how to feed the levain, so if you're not sure how to get a ripe levain to mix a dough, I'll make sure to leave a link to that in the description. So let's get started and mix this dough. To start this bread, we're gonna autolyze the flour and water only. We're gonna leave the levain out of it. I have a lot of videos mixing in the spiral mixer, but today, for everyone, uh, we're gonna mix this in a planetary style mixer and it'll give you a better idea of how to mix your doughs at home. We are going to add the water one to the mixer. This mixer has quite a friction factor, so I'm using relatively cold water. And finally, we're gonna add the bread flour. So this Autolise is without the levain. If I'm doing a bread by hand, I would usually add the levain, but in the mixer, it's quite easy to, to do that and I still don't even remember how to do this. I, this is how little I use these mixers. And I'm just gonna start on first speed and essentially all we want is for all the water to be fully absorbed into the flour. I've got my water too here along with my salt and inclusions and turmeric paste. So I'm gonna get rid of this. Now that the dough is mixed, I'm gonna just clean off the dough hook here. And to show you, I'll take this off. You can see that the dough has come together. There's no dry bits in the bottom of the bowl. If I take this little piece off, I can squeeze off about an apricot size. It doesn't really window at this point, but that's okay. And I'm gonna just take a wet dough scraper and I'm gonna scrape down the bowl. And we're gonna leave this in here to Autolies for about an hour. If you were doing this with the Levan mixing by hand, you would do 20 to 30 minutes. And if I do this without the, without the Levan, honestly, it doesn't really matter. You can do it without the Levan starter and leave it for an hour, two hours, whatever. Um, I like to leave it for at least 20 minutes. So I'm just gonna scrape this down. I'm gonna place a towel over top of the dough. And in the meantime, while this is resting, we're gonna make the turmeric paste. So we're gonna mix the turmeric with two parts water, one part turmeric, and it's gonna incorporate into the dough much easier. Any powder is going to dry the dough and remove moisture. So we wanna hydrate this first so that it stays about the same hydration in the dough. And honestly, it just mixes in easier and it makes your life easier, so do it. While our dough is auto leasing, we're gonna do the turmeric paste. So I'm gonna add this with some water and whisk it together. So we're just gonna put this in the bowl. Be careful, because it stains everything yellow if you get it on the table. Take your whisk and your water, and I like to add a little bit, whisk that in, and add the rest to this. We want this to be sort of a thickened paste. There we go. Not super watery or loose, because you have to remember that's gonna affect your overall dough's hydration, but something like that. A bit of a loose paste, and that is gonna be great. If you wanted to add other flavors to this, you could. You could add some cumin or anything like that, and this will actually thicken up a little bit as it sits and our autolyse happens as well. So I'm gonna clear this up. Careful not to get any on your table. And in a few minutes, we're gonna mix the rest of our dough. Our dough's been autolyzing for about 45 minutes. Our turmeric paste is ready. We've got our tart cherries, our ripe levain, and we've got toasted seeds. To toast the seeds, I do them at about 375 for between 12 to 15 minutes. I like to toast them really dark because I find that's the best way to get flavor, but you can do it however you'd like. You can also buy them already toasted if you'd like. So we're gonna start here by putting our levain in. Now we are going to throw this on the scale, I've got a spatula here. Shout out to Helena for putting that there. To make this easier, I'm just gonna pop this lid off of here. There we go. And I'm gonna use a wet hand and I'm just gonna get in there with my hand and we're gonna do 118 gram, 181 gram, 181? 181. And if you're a couple grams under, over, whatever, I've got 187 there, that's fine. And I've got enough starter here to feed my Levin later. So I'm just gonna reserve this 
place my lid back on. I've got loads of sourdough discard recipes on my website, so if you are looking for ideas to use your sourdough discard, definitely check out my site. That's gonna help you a lot. And with this, I'm gonna feed my starter later, and if there's anything left over, I'll place this jar in the fridge, and on the weekend, I'll make some waffles for the kids. Now we're gonna mix in the Levan. I've got the starter in there, and I'm just gonna put it on first speed until this mixes in. I like to set a timer for about 15 minutes and just to keep track of my mixing time. I don't usually go by the mixing time on the timer. I look at the dough, but it's good to know how long it took you to mix. Now that it's started to mix, I'm gonna turn this up to second speed. And now third speed. This is a little mixer. They're all a little bit different from a speed and power point of view, so you're just gonna have to adjust accordingly. We don't wanna really aggressively mix this, but we do want it to mix well enough to mix in the Levan. Now, these little planetary mixers aren't quite as good as the spiral, so every now and then, I like to just get in there and remove the dough from the hook, make sure that you've got everything. We're gonna scrape the sides down a little bit. And the water I didn't talk about before, but we're using about 20 degrees Celsius water. And that's because this is gonna have a long mixing. Once we add the turmeric paste, it's gonna really kind of hammer the dough and the friction factor is gonna be quite high. So I'm gonna turn this back on now that we've scraped it. You can see the dough has come together pretty well. It just needs a bit more development. Our dough has been mixing for about six minutes now on kind of second, third speed. We've added the water too, and now it's time to add the salt. The salt is gonna tighten the dough up a little bit. If you're mixing by hand, I like to use the water too to mix in the salt, but when you're mixing on a machine, the machines are powerful enough to mix that in. So we're gonna put the salt in, turn this on, and it'll take another couple minutes, two to three minutes of mixing. What we'll do after is use our fingers, wet them, and just try to feel if there's any granules of salt. If there's not, we'll start to add the water too, followed by the turmeric paste. You can see the turmeric paste is thickened up a little bit as well, uh, just from sitting there, which is good. We don't want it to be super wet. You want it to be just loose enough to mix into the dough. I always buy extra cherries because I love eating them, and this is my favorite thing to do when the dough mixes, is to eat the cherries. Oh my God, it's so good. When we started mixing, I set the timer for 15 minutes. It's already been 10 minutes, and the dough is just getting the salt mixed in. We see a lot of videos and read online about don't knead your dough, don't mix your dough, but I actually think for a lot of doughs, it's important to mix them, and the mixing time is often underestimated. I'm hands-free. The dough is just mixing, I'm not doing anything, but it still takes that time and requires that time to develop a good gluten network. If you want to take a look here, I'll stop the mixer really quickly. And you can actually see that the dough is getting quite strong and it pulls quite well. So this is a really good sign. The dough has also cleaned up the mixing bowl on its own, meaning it's starting to stick to itself. So we're gonna give it another couple minutes and then we'll start to add the water too. We're now gonna to start to add the water too, but before I do that, I'm gonna just take the dough off the hook like this and you can see it's very strong, the dough. If I grab it, I can pull it all out in one piece. I mean, I can, I can do it for you here. So you can see here, even without a dough scraper, I can just pull this out with one piece. It's quite strong. So we're now gonna place this back on the mixer and we're gonna slowly add the water. It's actually been 13 minutes already and that's quite a good sign. With the planetary mixer, I don't like to add too much water at once. So we're just gonna stream it in slowly. If you add too much, it kind of sloshes the dough around. You can actually see it's already sloshing around on me. So we're gonna wait until this is incorporated. Although it's hard because I'm not that patient and I just wanna add it. So I'm gonna add a little bit, a little bit more. And you're gonna hear the dough kind of break apart. And it's important to mix this until it comes back together. We're gonna increase the speed. I'm now on actually speed five for this little mixer. And there's the rest of the water in there. Oh, probably should turn it down before I do that. That's probably not my smartest move ever. Give your table a wipe. Clean as you go. And once this comes together, we're then gonna add our turmeric paste. 
That's my timer. We've actually been mixing for 15 minutes already. Okay, now the water is incorporated, but you see the dough is still a bit slack. So that means we need a few more minutes. And then it's time to mix in our paste. We want the dough to clean itself off the bowl again. And you can kind of see if you look closely in the bowl that it's smeared on the bottom, but the top is coming apart. And in a, in a moment, it's gonna pull it all, all itself off. Now I can see that the dough is pulling itself together. Another thing you can check is if the dough kind of falls off the hook in one piece instead of tears, which it is. You can also wet your hands a little bit and give it a pull and just to see if it has good strength and extensibility, which it does. So at this point, we can now add our turmeric paste so that I don't get this all over. I'm actually gonna take the bowl off and we're gonna just put the whole paste into the dough. We're gonna add all of the paste at once. Try to get everything out there. Try not to get it on your table either because it will definitely stain your table. And if you don't care, that's also cool, but I don't want the table yellow today. The dough won't stain the table once it's mixed, but this paste will. Throw this back on the mixer. And we're now gonna mix this. So I like to start mixing on slow so that it doesn't slosh the paste everywhere. And then we're gonna crank this up and allow this to mix into the dough. All right, the dough is mixed. Now all of our turmeric paste is evenly incorporated into this. We're gonna bring this up and now we're gonna add the seeds and the, and the dried cherries. We're coming up on 20 minutes of mixing, but I'm also making a video and taking pictures at the same time and trying to talk to the camera. Your total mixing time is gonna be about 15 to 18 minutes. So you're gonna add the seeds. We're gonna add the cherries. I like to sort of break them up because they tend to clump together. And by doing this, I can just make sure I don't get the chunks in there. Put this back down and on first speed or potentially second speed, depending on your mixer, we're gonna mix in the inclusions. While this happens, I'm gonna grab a bowl to put the dough in. You could also laminate in the inclusions, meaning stretching the dough out, putting them on top. I find it easier to just do it here while everything's dirty in the mixer anyways. You can see the dough is quite strong and the inclusions are really well mixed in here. And let's get this out and into a bowl. All right, our dough is fully mixed. We've incorporated all the inclusions. We've got that water one in there, that water two. It looks beautiful. It's got that nice shine to it, nice and yellow. I like to try and get everything off the dough hook. And we're gonna place this into a lightly oiled bowl. Before we do, I'm gonna take the temperature and we are at 27 degrees Celsius, which is perfect. We wanna hold that there. If you have a little proofing box, you can use that. You can put it somewhere warm. If your house is a little cold, you can, you can put it somewhere warm like an insulated cooler. Um, it's actually a good temperature in my house and I'm just gonna leave it on the counter. So I'm gonna scoop this up in one go and place that into my bowl. You can see it comes out in one piece, which is a really good sign of gluten development. And then I'm just gonna pick this dough up in the bowl to sort of round it. So by picking it up, I'm gonna give it a nice round shape like that. And we're gonna let this rise for three hours. During that three hours, we'll give it two folds. Then we're gonna divide it, shape it, and place it in the fridge overnight for a cold ferment. Throw a towel, I'm gonna get cleaned up, throw a towel on this and set a timer for three hours. Okay, mixing, done, time to clean up. Our dough has been bulk fermenting for about 50 minutes and we're gonna give it its first fold. This dough will get two folds and I like to leave about 90 minutes between the last fold and shaping. That gives the dough enough time to relax so that we can give it a good shape. To give it a fold, we're gonna use a wet dough scraper to release the dough from the bowl. Then we're gonna use wet hands to pull the dough up and over. And I'm gonna just go around the bowl and fold in each corner. You can turn the bowl. You can do it with one hand like this if you want. I like to grab it solid. Then I'm gonna pick this dough up and flip it over. And as I place it back into the bowl, 
If you see here, I can let this hang and it's got a really good dough strength to it. The other thing that you'll notice is before the fold, the dough is almost flat in the bowl and now it's rounded and that's a really good sign of dough strength. We're gonna cover this back up, let it sit for another 30 to 40 minutes and give it its second fold. We're coming up on the 90 minute mark, meaning we're halfway through bulk fermentation. It's actually an hour and 33 minutes left. And as I said before, I like to get this fold in with an hour and a half left so that the shaping is nice and, nice and smooth. We're gonna do the same thing. Wet your dough, give it a good stretch, and just rotate yourself around the bowl. Oh, the bowl is a bit wonky donkey. And then you wanna pick that up, make sure it hangs tight in your hands. Make sure it's good and strong in there. I'm gonna place a towel back on here. We're gonna let this go for another 90 minutes and then we're gonna shape our dough. Hi, I'm Juniper. I'm one of the best bakers and today we're going to be shaping the turmeric sourdough. All right, so now what I want you to do is use the scraper to loosen the bread from the bowl. Do it this way, look. See how it's rounded on one side? Use the rounded side. Yeah. Okay, great. Now let's see. We're gonna tilt it out of the bowl. You wanna tilt the bowl and I'll scrape it out? Yeah. Okay, tilt it forward. Pet, 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 pet. Now we're gonna cut this in half, okay? So try to cut so it. I can have one and you can Sure, which half do you want? This one. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna push it up, cut and push. I'll get the scale. Cut and then push it forward. Yep, like that. Try again, there you go, and push it forward. Cut it all the way, th yeah, there you go. Okay, let's put this up on the scale and we're gonna go with two 900 gram pieces. Okay, what's that say? It says, what's 896. Seven. Watch out, let's do yours. 885, all right. So, you wanna do one and I do one? So do you know? What, do you remember what to do? This one. You wanna do that one? Yeah. Okay, so put this on the side. And what you're gonna do is you're just gonna push the dough on the table to round it into a ball. Use the scraper like this, look. Turkey. It's okay, you just use the scraper like this to push it into a ball, okay? You don't need to put your hand on the dough, you can just drag the dough into a circle. That's the game. That's okay, it takes practice. Okay, now put now, you're gonna push it this way. Watch your fingers. You can do this too. So look, why don't you push it away from you? Yep, and then push it this way. Yep, and then push it that way. I got you. Okay, and then we're gonna pull it towards us, okay? Watch your fingers, help me. Yeah, and then around, ready? Yeah. Okay, now we're gonna move it out of the way. Ready? Can I tap it? Yep. <laughs> okay, now we're gonna rest these for about 20 minutes. Wait, let me kiss it. That one's yours. <laughs> now we're gonna let the dough rest for about 20 minutes. All right, you want me to start a timer or you wanna do it? I like to. Dough's been resting for almost 20 minutes and we're gonna do a final shape. First, I'm gonna prep the Benetton. If you want to learn more about them, I've got a video on how I maintain mine. This is a combination of rice flour, rye, and about 50-50. We're gonna dust the baskets with this and this is gonna prevent the dough from sticking. I don't really like the look or the way it kind of turns out if you use straight rice flour, so I mix it with rye. We're also going to dust the loaves with just a little bit of bread flour. You can use all-purpose, whatever. You could even use rye for this if you want. So I'm gonna gently dust the top of the loaf, and then I'm gonna flip it over into my hand so that the wet side or the side that was down is now up, and I'm gonna just stretch this into a rectangle. I'm gonna bring the bottom up and kind of seal it. Then we're gonna bring the, out, the sides out and create this kind of uh, triangle look to it. And then I'm going to bring the corners in, tuck, 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 
And at the end, we'll just give it its final shape, a little bit of a curve on the bench, flip it over and place that into the basket. Now these are gonna rest in the basket. They're gonna rise a bit and relax. And now we'll do this one. For this one, again, just gently flour the top. I like to pat off the extra flour, flip it over. I really don't want any flour on the surface. And this one, we're gonna do a little bit of stitch. I'll show you another way to shape this. Same thing, rectangle, bring the bottom. We're gonna bring the sides out, seal, seal. The middle top can come down. And then we're just gonna take the corners and stitch the loaf, working our way down to get a tight shape. Roll it over and just pull the dough into itself so that you end up with a nice batard shape. If the top tears like that, there was a little tear from where the cherry was popping out, I like to dust it with a bit of flour, flip it over, place it into the basket. You can pinch the corners if you want, and that's it. Once you have your dough in the banatones, I'm gonna cover these. You can use a shower cap. I like to use a bag. I just reuse the same bag over and over. So we're going to place the dough in the bag, like that, and like that. Now we're gonna place these in the fridge. They're gonna stay in there for 12 to 18 hours, and we'll bake them tomorrow. Time to bake the turmeric sourdough. I've got my Challenger bread pan. This is a dedicated bread pan for home bakers. It has been preheated at 500 degrees for about an hour, so it's quite hot. I've also got my breads that have been in the fridge for about, I think, 16 hours, and they're ready to bake. So I prefer to cold ferment my doughs. I'm actually only gonna bake one of these right now, but I wanted to show you both. They look nice and relaxed. You press into it, it springs back. And then I've got this silicone pad that's gonna sit inside here. You could also use parchment or just flip it right on. Um, I like to. I forgot oven mitts and this is hot. Not as prepared, but you know what? We're baking bread, so it's okay. So we're gonna remove the lid here. I'm gonna place the pad here and gently just flip the bread into the middle of there. Then finally, we're gonna score. Once you've scored the dough, place the lid back on. I like to spray a bit of water in here and that's just gonna preset the steam. We're gonna place this in my oven, which is at 500, drop the temperature to 480, give it about 20 minutes, remove the lid, and then the last 15 or 16 minutes with no lid. All right, so we're halfway through the bake. We're gonna take the lid off the Dutch oven. Ooh, looks nice. It's hot, and we're gonna place this back in the oven for about 16 minutes, and we'll see how it comes out. Okay, our first bread is out of the oven. It looks beautiful. I love that it's hot. I love that char coming across the top. You can see those cherries bursting out of the dough. What I'm gonna do now is a little dance. Well, actually, we can just put this on the table. I'm gonna put this on top. We're gonna place this here to cool. I'm gonna put this back in the oven and I'm gonna bake my next loaf of bread. We're gonna cut into this and see what the inside looks like. Can't wait to taste it. Our breads are out of the oven. They've been cooling just long enough that we can cut them and they look absolutely amazing. I love the beautiful color. The smell is awesome. Let's cut one in half and see what it looks like inside. Oh, come on. Look at that. Woo! I love the look of this bread. The smell is amazing, that bright yellow color. I cannot wait to eat this. See you in the next video.